Have you ever wondered why pivot tables are so great? Or do you think that it's just some complicated feature in your spreadsheet? Well, today I will demystify pivot tables for you and show you how to get started easily and quickly. Pivot tables can save you a lot of time and help you to understand your data in a dynamic way. Plus, you can always visualize the result in the chart. Today, that's what I'm going to show you in this video. My name is Michael, and I'm with Office Nifty. And stay tuned, and we'll just jump right into the tutorial. We'll get started with this example spreadsheet that is called pivot.ods. The file is actually available on LibreOffice help website, which you can download yourself and use to follow along. This is the web page that I'm on, and I'll include this web address in the video description below, so you can access it there as well to follow along. And to use the example file, all we have to do is right-click on this file icon and click Save Link As. And once it's saved onto your download folder, you can go ahead and open it up and you'll see the file within LibreOffice Calc. So hopefully you are seeing on your computer something similar to this, where on the left we have a table. It's a simple car inventory table that's split up by different branch locations, car models, and inventory accounts across different areas. Here they have a column for used, showroom, and repair shop inventory counts. Towards the right, we actually see here a pivot table that is already on this sheet. And if we scroll further down, we see there's a pivot chart that's based off of the pivot table that we see above. So as a note, typically, to create a pivot table, you could use a table just like this or your own. And as you can notice, this is a table that's what we like to call or think of as flat data. What this means is just that the table has some information, columns, names, etc. But as you can tell, there isn't any information such as subtotals or percentages, averages, and, or any sort of analytical data in there. Now, the nice thing with pivot tables and what it can do for you, as we can see here, is we could get the sum of different values based on how we organize the pivot table. And there's also advanced capabilities, such as being able to do averages and other mathematical functions if we wanted to. There are quite a number of advantages when using the pivot table. Uh, first of all, it's pretty easy to get set up and going, which I'll show you soon. But also the functionality that comes with it makes it very easy to sort of analyze the data that you have in your table and allow you to quickly get useful information out of your table. Okay, so let's actually start to create our first pivot table. To begin, what we need to do is select the table that we want from the first cell to the last cell. So here on my keyboard, I'll press the shift key and left click to select the whole range for the table. Once we have the table selected, we can go up to the menu and click on insert and choose pivot table. Here, the current selection is already picked for us, then we can hit OK. Now we see the pivot table layout wizard. This allows us to set the columns and rows for the pivot table. I'll just move this wizard aside so I could look at the existing pivot table and try to recreate it. So we can see that the pivot table has model and the different inventory counts. In order to recreate that, I'll go ahead and put the car model into the row fields. I'll simply click and drag this into the row fields area. 
And then for the different inventory areas, I will click and drag them. And for the different car inventory columns, I'll click and drag them into the data field. So the showroom comes here, and also the used and the repair shop inventory accounts. And one thing also is there is a filter. So here, this little drop down actually is a filter, and we can see that it's a filter by the branch. I'll go ahead and move the branch into the filter section. And I'll go ahead and click OK for LibreOffice Calc to create the pivot table. So now we see the pivot table is created in a new sheet for us. And the look and even the colors that come with it is pretty much the same as what we have in the first sheet. Here we can interact with the pivot table by filtering by branch. So we can choose which ones to display. Here I'll just show the city AA branch inventories. And after I click OK, the filter just shows city AA. If I wanted to have two different locations, I'll go ahead and include city BB and click OK. So now the filter drop down shows multiple. So we can just go back and have it show all again and click OK. So from here, if we wanted to adjust the pivot table, we can always return back to the layout pivot table wizard by right clicking on the pivot table and clicking on properties. Here we can actually adjust more of how the columns and rows are. And there's quite a lot of advanced features as well. If we took a look at the options and the source and destination, this allows us to fine tune the pivot table more as we desire. For now, I just leave the pivot table as is. And maybe in a future video, I could get into some of the more advanced features. I'll go ahead and just click cancel. As we see the default pivot table, column sizes are pretty much standard. And we see in column D, actually it seems too narrow because the words are extending past the pivot table itself. So one easy way to auto resize the columns is just to select the columns that we want to resize and double click on the border of the column. As we see the mouse cursor has changed and I'll just double click here. Then we see that it auto resize the columns for us according to each column's text. Now let's see how we can create the pivot chart. To do that, we could just click on the pivot table and then go to the menu, click insert and choose chart. Now the chart wizard shows up and we wanna follow in this example what the previous spreadsheet was showing us. Now to recreate the pivot chart that we had on the first sheet, all we need to do is select the correct chart type. In this wizard, it already by default chose a column chart for us. Then all we need to do is go to the chart elements and type in some of the titles and access information to match what was on the first spreadsheet. So for the title, we had car inventory. Subtitle was the month and year. X axis was models and the Y axis was count. So as we see, when we typed in the information, the chart actually updated on its own. So we're seeing car inventory as a title and a different access names already. Here I can click finish and voila, here's our pivot chart. Now I could move the pivot chart further away from the top because it's blocking the pivot table. I'll go to the edge and just click and drag to position that I want. Here we go. And if you remember, the pivot chart on the first sheet actually had a background color. 
So I'll go ahead and return to the chart I created and we can right click on the pivot chart, choose edit. And as you can see, the top toolbar has changed. And what I want to go to now is click format selection button. Here in the chart area, I can go ahead and just pick a color and it shows the active and new colors. I wanted to now take the color I chose, then I'll click OK. And now we see our pivot chart has a new background color. And that's all there is to it. This is very much the similar chart in shape and size to what the original was on the first sheet. So that was a quick and short tutorial on how to create a pivot table and pivot chart. As we went through the different wizards, as you could tell, there are a lot of different options and ways to customize the pivot table and charts to your liking. So I encourage you to play around with it on your own. And if you have any questions related to the spreadsheet or to the pivot tables and charts, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay nifty.